What is up everybody, Dak here, and today I'm super excited as I'm announcing a project that I'm about to be working on. Uh, right now I've got a bit of free time and I thought, okay, it's time to finally build the folded horn. So right now I've got up a program called Horn Resp, or Horn Response, Horn R-E-S-P. And uh, what you can do in this is you can do horn simulations. So I've got up a horn right now that I'm about to show off. Uh, but first off, I want to show off its efficiency curve right here and its frequency response here. So this horn's going to be, uh, it's going to go from roughly 40 hertz up to 150 hertz, uh, relatively flat, but all at 110 dB at 1 watt. 110 dB open air at 1 watt, which is pretty astounding. Most subs are about 90 dB. So this thing is about a hundred times louder per watt than the average sub, or at least this program says, and I'm really hoping this program's correct, but looking at it, the efficiency graph here, it peaks at about 55% efficient right there at 60 hertz, or 60 hertz or thereabouts, which is crazy. But you can see that it's got quite a wide uh, efficient bandwidth compared to a lot of subs which either have a very narrow efficiency peak or just aren't efficient at all this thing has a wide nice efficiency peak so I'll close that window and I'll focus on uh, this one here <laughs> uh, and yeah you can see right here that it stays pretty damn efficient across a good spectrum uh, from 40 Hertz up 40 hertz should be good enough for just about any type of music for a sub. Uh, not many things at all have 30 hertz, and things that do have 30 hertz, uh, it's not it's not needed really. You can kind of go with a quiet, attenuated 30 hertz. But yeah, if I go to schematic diagram right here, you can see, and I'm just going to pull this down to the side so you can possibly see it compared to. Oh, I've got two windows of that now. Uh, you can see this design that I've got behind that window. And if I put it back up in front, you can see that it's got two parts. It's got this first part, which uh, goes from 30 by 30 centimeters to 60 by 60 centimeters. So this is the, the bell of the horn. Then you can see here, this is a parabolic horn right here. This is an exponential and it's not conical. It's parabolic, which means its rate of increasing is constant every 30 centimeters it increases by the same amount but because um, uh, what was it going there? Uh, because it's expanding constantly its average across here it's increasing by a smaller percentage for every length so that's why it looks like it's increasing a lot down here but not much up here because it's based off percentage kind of thing so yeah, you can see right here, 6 litre volume, uh, which is about the same as I have up here. And then it increases constantly. Once again, that is a smaller kind of percentage than that. In the first uh, 30 centimetres, it doubles. And you can see in the program, um, in the thir first centi 30 centimetres, about here, it doubles. So going back to here... This was the first design that I had, but as you can see, it's not particularly compact. It's probably about a meter long, uh, not very optimized. So I started designing a proper folded horn to make it a lot more compact. Uh, these are some of the first sketches I did, as you can see, um, not particularly keen, uh, sorry, clean. A lot of it was just mucking around with different angles and that. Uh, but eventually I worked on a better design and I got to this point here which is where it's kind of like a, a big fin in the middle and all the folded passages are in there and the sound comes out either side of the horn to come out the front so this is kind of like a huge phase bug almost and yeah here's the final design I've got right here um, as you can see it looks very complex probably difficult to work out what's going on right here but I'm about to show it off using uh, one of my favorite 3D modeling programs. Uh, so you can see exactly what all these numbers mean. And you can kind of follow 
the path the sound makes through these passages. Alright, now on to the 3D model. Uh, for this one I'm going to be using my favourite 3D modelling program uh, which is Minecraft. So, uh, you possibly heard of Minecraft. Uh, it's actually, well, yeah, it's a game. But something I really like about it is it's based on a one by one meter grid system. And the way you interact is by placing blocks, aka voxels. So, this is a bit like pix you edit pixels in Photoshop, you edit voxels in Minecraft. Whereas things like Adobe Illustrator or uh, Creo parametric stuff like that uh, it's all vector based but something I like about this is uh, it being voxel based lets you edit it just one block at a time instead of having to muck around with lines and lengths and everything I find it's very easy to just get in and make something in this compared to any other software which has a steep learning curve I think anyone can can jump into Minecraft and, and just just like make a something that looks vaguely like a car from a distance real quick. Um, so yeah, here it is. Imagine this is the front of the horn. Uh, you can see these are the corners. This would all be a wall, right? I've taken the walls, the top and the back off it just to make it a bit easier to move around it and get an idea what's going on. So here's where the sound waves come out. And as I fly along here, you'll notice it gets narrower and narrower, just like normal horns. And here, again, it gets narrower. And all the way down here, narrower, still narrowing, still narrowing up until this point. Now it's getting very narrow. And then you end up right here, which is where the driver mounts. Now, <laughs> I know it's quite, a, it's quite a complex path, but it was really needed to get the most out of this at the limited volume as you can see by these bits right here uh, these bits here and maybe the top and bottom here I really didn't have much space to waste in this so hopefully it should just translate straight from this 3D model here into real life of course things would be more smooth less jagged but something else too good about using Minecraft is all these blocks um, because I've used a uh, one block equals two by two by two centimeters, each block is about the thickness of three quarter inch plywood. So I can take that into account for dimensions. And yeah, it's neat that it came out like that. I'm going to be making it out of three quarter inch plywood, as I think one inch plywood is a bit thick and a bit heavy. So I don't think it's needed. I'm going to be making it out of three quarter inch plywood and in the high pressure spots, for example, right here, uh, the wood would be under a lot of pressure. I'll possibly fill it with um, some sort of two part epoxy or maybe stiffen it using fiberglass resin behind it as well as coating the front so it's nice and stiff. So yeah, I'm going to be making this out of wood in real life and it'll hopefully be an incredibly efficient PA subwoofer which can do 40 Hertz which is about the lowest kind of tone slash kick you'll find in normal music quotations here um, so it it should be very useful and its size being 60 by 60 by 1 meter should be relatively compact it should fit my car with the seats down without any problems Although I do have that sub in it right now, so... But yeah, the volume of it, 360 litres, it'll be bigger than the sub in my car. But um, it'll be for outdoor use and it won't live in there permanently. Also, I've got a trailer, I can move it around. There's not much use putting a car sub in a trailer, so... I th hopefully this adds to it. And yeah, hopefully uh, you're interested, and if you are interested in seeing a folded horn build, just to see the process of making it, and then to see if it's successful or not, and to what degree, uh, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button, because I'm super keen, and if anyone else is keen, then I'm going to be ultra keen, and I'll have a, a stroke or something. <laughs> uh, but, oh yeah, I'm, I'm so damn keen for this. I still haven't found a driver yet. 
Uh, from what I've seen, a lot of PA drivers aren't very good. Uh, the problem is their QTS is too high, and from what I can tell for Horn, you need a low QTS, you need a low RMS value. RMS for speakers is um, resist is mechanical resistance. So every time you push in a speaker, if it bounces kind of thing when you let go, it's got a low RMS, but if it doesn't bounce, then it's got a, a medium to high RMS. And not many high power subs have a low RMS. So it's a bit tricky finding a sub. I might have to spend a fair bit of money and get something special for it. So, <laughs> yeah, 5,000 watt 12 inch or something. Yeah, or... In a, in a horn? Yeah, that's going to be pretty nasty. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, um, and hopefully I'll have the video up of the materials shortly. See ya.